Welcome back to the podcast. I'm here with your boys, Coy and Soy, and this is your post credit segment. With me, as always, I'm my longtime friends and co-hosts, Jalen Holston, Keone McKeague. Say what's up to the crowd. Observers and madams and <laughs> all, all the, the all, they, all them. the above. Hello, everyone. <laughs> oh, Fresh off a <laughs> dramatic five-setter for the season conference home opener, the boys... Did me well today, but I know Good. we're doing a different pod. But that was the I most can't wait to from that on listening. If you right, are exactly. a part of the volleyball world, or were a part of the volleyball world, whether in any capacity, growing up, coaching, spectating, we are introducing a new segment called Team Huddle, where all four of, four of us, some of us active coaches, some was coaching in the past, are going to be going through whether it's you know. Things that happened recently with our teams, some of our origin stories, things that happened in the past, and just our viewpoints in general as we have both played and been on the sidelines as the coach. So yeah. please stick around. And if you are interested, give it a listen. If not, if you know someone who loves volleyball, share it with them because then maybe I'll wet their whistle. Exactly. Um, that drops a Thursday, right? That's this Thursday, whenever. Yes, well, it does. That'll be well, 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 for well, this. this pod so be... give it a okay, listen. Yeah. It's out. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Run it back. Run it back. Right. Seen it. <laughs> Missed it. Go get it. Um, to start anyway. off, uh, before we get into kind of our little docket, we did want to pay our respects to the late, great uh, Lance Reddick, who recently just passed away. Uh, for those who you may not know his na- him by name, um, he was a actor who took place in The Wire. I believe he was in Fringe, the TV show that was on for a bit. Um, He's the concierge in the John Wick franchise, so he will be... I don't know if this is his last production that he was able to complete, but he will be in it this weekend as this is releasing for the fourth installment of the John Wick franchise. And Jalen, I believe he was also part of the Destiny and Keone, you said Horizon franchises for video games? Yes, yes, yes. So... Yeah, we definitely want to give our thoughts and prayers, our respects to the family and friends. Um, Did you guys have anything you wanted to add regarding uh, Lance Reddick? Okay. Just going to be deeply missed. I uh, Mm -hmm. just did the the story mission for the latest season of Destiny and the big character moment. He has a big part in the cut scene. It's just just different. You know what I mean? And ironically, one of the characters in the game also, like, died. So it was just weird kind of hearing him also condone like one of the characters you know what i mean that we lost in the in the game that voice actress is still okay but it's just you know it's just it was a weird timing you know to see that mm-hmm. cut scene right now but yeah definitely gonna be it's just a little bit different going home Goodness. to the tower in the game you know and he was a part of uh i believe keone and my fan casting when we did our x-men uh mm-hmm. segment or fan yes. cast segment yeah. uh, a little while back um so definitely wish that could have came to fruition but other than that, we do want to, once again, give our thoughts and condolences to the family and friends of Lance Reddick. Mm-hmm. Um, on today's segment for post-credits, we are going to go into the winners of mo- some of the main categories for the Oscars that recently took place, as well as doing a quick touch on Victoria Alonso out as the head of visual effects um, for Marvel and the <laughs> MCU <laughs> universe. Um, He's gone. And then we're going to go, of course, into the Mandalorian episode three, as well as the season finale of season one of The Last of Us. Um, So, yeah, we'll get get right into it. Um, The first category I did want to talk about is uh, makeup and hairstyling. Not a real big one, but just because I know it had a couple movies that we were definitely spectators on. Uh, The Whale ended up winning that one. Um, Personally, it beat out. Uh, the Batman, which I thought should have been the winner, especially with the complete unrecognizable uh, work they did on Colin Farrell's Penguin character. Um, I thought they did fantastic with that. They also beat out All Quiet on the Western Front, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, which I thought, once again, was also well done, um, especially given that it is a kind of cultural um, makeup that was conducted for that. And then, of course, Elvis, where they definitely did prosthetics to make him a little more tan, whatever it may be, or his later part of his life where he was a little more on that heavy set side. Um, but did you guys have any thoughts on this? I just listen. <laughs> Tell him, Jay. It's, 
it's no offense to Brennan Fraser, but he's not the model that he was in The Mummy, right? So, not a whole he's lot of work. Some weight. He is, he is. Kudos to Brennan Fraser, but there wasn't a whole lot to put on the whale. Okay? Like, we're just going to get honest here. Meanwhile, you have to create entire worlds like that of Elvis, like that of Black Panther, and also the Western Front. Like, these are huge huge productions because they're period pieces or they're, they're sci-fi pieces. And to me personally, why are they so shunned for what is nonetheless a, a drama? Like it, 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 it and I, I, the, the, the makeup was impressive. Don't get me wrong. It was very seamless. Obviously Brennan Fraser really worked himself into the role through the makeup. However, it, if the category is hair, makeup, like, you know, costumes, a different thing, but I feel like the other films were far and away more qualified in the category than the whale. Yeah. I mean, on top of that, I think if you already kind of knew that Brendan Fraser was going to, I feel like it didn't, he, they didn't really need that other award. It was one of those, like you could have given it to another movie type of scenarios as well. Spread the wealth, man. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just, I mean, for me, I think I'm on the same boat with Jay. Like immediately I thought, was it, was he not that much smaller than the makeup <laughs> would have made? Because I feel like when he recorded it, he was coming back. You know what I mean? Like there was mm-hmm. there was comeback Brendan coming back, but he wasn't necessarily like where he is now. Which you know, kudos to him. Looks great. But I mean, fantastic. But it was one of those things where I was like, there was mm. literally like the penguin and all the other characters, and then in all the quiet on the Western Front. I mean, it's a wartime movie, which means you know. A ton of different characters need that makeup. And then, obviously, Black Panther. I mean, I don't even... Jesus, how many different on. hairstyles do you got to put in there when we go to yeah. Wakanda? Like, that's... Come like, come on. I mean, some of them had no hair. Some of them did have no hair. That's true. Yeah. But majority did. And it's true. Yeah. No offense, I think but culturally, some people that they, they put on for the mm-hmm. whole cast and extras for the actual um, funeral segment for... Chadwick Boseman's character. Yeah. Um, that yeah. was, that alone should have trumped the whale. I mean, come on. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, that the was The whale impressive. had, what, maybe six actors That's what I'm saying. in yeah, one so location. Weird. So it's but, basically yeah. just for Brendan that the award was given. So I, I mean, no, and, you know, not to make it, you know, but like black people hair is more difficult to work with. I'm sorry. Like it, so the fact that it looked great, again, it's, what, what, what are we doing here? You know what I mean? <laughs> we don't. And on that note, we're going to move on to Best Supporting Actress. Oh, oh, Jesus. Right. Son of a bitch. Oh, so the nominees go. for this category right. were Jamie Lee Curtis, <sighs> Michael Bassett, Hong yeah. Chow, Carrie Condon, and Stephanie Hsu. Okay. Um, the winner was Jamie Lee Curtis for Everything Everywhere All at Once, beating out who many thought were the, was the favorite, Angela front Bassett. If you yeah, will. Front runner, if you will. Winning uh, the multiple, the plethora of awards that were leading up to the actual Academy Awards. Um, Angela Bassett in the Black Panther Wakanda Forever did not actually take home the Oscar. Um, any thoughts on this, guys? Travesty. Corroboree. I'm just joking. <laughs> Completely I mean, I don't really know how else to put it. And um, what, what, what did Jamie Lee Curtis give to that role in know. that movie? I don't even think she was in it that much, if I recall. I mean, it was a long time ago when I tried to watch that movie. But, you know, like, meanwhile, most people, as a consensus, when they walked out of Black Panther, commonly said Angela Bassett carried the fuck out of that movie. Because she did. And it's no discredit to the lead actress in that movie. She did fantastic, having to kind of obviously step in for Chadwick Boseman. You know what I mean? Yeah. Rather large shoes to fill. But she did a fantastic job playing Shuri and taking on that role and all that other stuff. But needless to say, if Angela Bassett's not in that movie to that capacity, the way that she conducted the character and the way that she made those choices, that movie doesn't work. It just doesn't work at all. If it's, if somehow she's not in there guiding Shuri from that motherly role, and then also trying to manage stuff for Wakanda in that queen role, the entire movie just doesn't make sense. It doesn't work at any stretch. So um, in fact, the fact that she was so good elevated characters that were, for the most part, I think pretty mid, like Namor. Like I enjoyed Namor, but if you recall the scene that I'm thinking of, when when that moment happens and he says that line, 
it's because she did so good that it elevates his character to making us more afraid and believable about who Namor is in the context of this movie. So when an actor is able to do that for your film, how was that not? I don't know. I don't understand. Meanwhile, Jamie Lee Curtis, I mean, obviously she did a great job, but it's not, it wasn't anything close to what Angela Bassett offered in black Panther. And the sag is what, Kills me. The sag. Yeah. 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 Peers, peers, yeah. other sag. actors who are voting mm-hmm. on the winner. I mean, um, I, I think the def- definitely when you look at especially awards season, the biggest thing for me when I look at categories like this is in the role they played, especially this one because I believe Keone, you've seen all the movies that were nominated yeah. as mm-hmm. well. Um, if I watch that movie and I see that character. Can I imagine anyone other than that person doing a better job? And if they leave an impression well enough where, nope, they brought everything that they needed to this character. It was perfect. All four of the other nominees did that other than Jamie Lee Curtis. No disrespect to Jamie Lee Curtis, Mm -hmm. but I am just saying in comparison to who you were nominated against, I don't think your acting was uninterchangeable yeah. if that makes sense right i mean i'm gonna bring anybody. it up we love jamie lee curtis let's yeah let's put that this isn't us roasting jamie. however when we're talking I about this think, thing yeah, yeah this this specific category i felt like she wasn't even the second best i she mean wasn't even the fourth <laughs> wow, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, wow. Yeah, I mean, wow. Well, you've seen the, like, Angela yeah, Bassett, I mean, Hong Chow, yeah. Carrie Condon, I th- and we, the daughter, Stephanie. I for sure thought Hong Chow. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot the time. Yeah, okay, so I was like, yeah, actually, yeah. Um, yeah, you're right. I mean, it, it's crazy because I felt like there were at least two. Now, now I feel like there are three, possibly, um, who definitely should have been above her in the category. I mean, it's like you said, like, even in the movie... I mean, she was the pseudo villain type of storyline. If you've seen the movie, there's a lot of confusing roles. You're not sure who's what in the movie. However, um, yeah, it just to me it was just kind of played out as like angry boss lady meets um, superhero villain yeah. meets all these other weird they nuanced things. However, I yeah, she just wasn't. It wasn't also, so. Also, a reminder: it's not Jamie Lee Curtis's changing. fault. She yeah. is not yeah, voting exactly. for herself. It is exactly. the Academy who decided to vote for her. And now, mm-hmm. who knows? I don't know if they ever. I've never actually looked into. It. I don't know if they released what the voting odds were when mm-hmm. after it's all said and done. It could have been very close. Could yeah. have been like one percent or one vote off that yeah. Angela Bassett didn't win. But yeah. to me, it just it just seems very odd. It's, it almost I almost want to hope that it was one of those scenarios where people might have thought, you know, Angela's for sure going to run away with this category. Let's throw like a burn vote in her direction. <laughs> kind of deal, I, don't even know I, that's I really don't allowed. get how you would go from the SAG award winning. Like it, it seems like it had to be unanimous for that one to get yeah. to this one and it being like. We still don't know who's going to, I don't know. It just made no sense. She could have easily won best actress instead of best supporting. You know what I mean? So I don't know. Yeah. It was, it was not, not a good choice. I mean, Before the only other thing that I could think of it's is that she, no, she, I mean, honestly, comic book movie. Cause, <laughs> mainly because she's white, but there's also yeah. the comic book movie. And on yeah. top of that, she was so good, you could almost argue that she was the actual lead in the movie. So maybe the supporting mm-hmm. actress didn't quite take with the Academy mm-hmm. because she did have so much screen time and was such a big part of the story and did so good carrying the movie. Mm-hmm. So there's that. But I also think it's a very blatant snub that would be at comic such book a, films That would be general. such a technicality type of yeah. bad voting. Like, if But I could see reason. how the Academy yeah. with their yeah. fucking yeah. purist lens uh, is like... Uh, uh, they've, uh, already, they've already given awards to Heath Ledger and Joaquin Phoenix for comic book roles. Like, why is this that's one any what different? I'm saying, right? bro. Because no. it's not a drama, because it's more flashy, because it's mm. Marvel, we can't just fucking acknowledge they're doing great work over there. Like, what do we... It's been almost... It's going to be, what, when did, when did Iron Man come out? 2008? Yep. So we're going on 13, oh, or yeah. basically 13, 15, 14 years? 15, 15 years. years. Yeah. Damn near almost 20 years 
of dominance at the box office by this company, but yet we refuse to let them win anything notable and keep them pigeonholed in this category of comic book movies, which means they can't get anything like significant from the Academy. It's ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. I'm sorry they make more money. I'm sorry more people watch them, <laughs> but go cry about it in your little hole and go watch another little indie drama to make your soul feel great. Okay. Hey, not that there's one, anything wrong with indie dramas. <laughs> so just, there's not. This rant was saying. better. This rant was better <laughs> than the first original. <laughs> <sighs> No idea what we're talking about. I know. Yeah, no. <laughs> have no idea. Have no idea. Not just that, but I feel like it was such. It's like a Shakespearean movie, man. Like it's. It is. It, it really is. Like if you took out all of the superhero elements from the film, it's like literally just a fantastic drama. Yeah. Like I, I don't understand. Um, before we get too, you know, angry and perturbed about all this, right, we're gonna move right. on to best supporting actor, which I we think, did. in contrast, was probably one of the more S- celebrated wins of the night. Um, <laughs> went to Kehi Kwan for everything, everywhere, all at once um, as the winner. And then there was Brian Tyree Henry in Causeway, Judd Hirsch in The Fablemans, Brendan Gleeson, Banshees of Inisherin, and Barry Keoghan, Banshees of Inisherin. Mm-hmm. Um, I definitely was overjoyed when he won. Um, his speech, I think, kind of encapsulated everything you Why? wanted to see. Huh? How are you? Uh, how are you for doing? <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna get into it. Yeah, yeah. Stop Don't worry. Asian hate. Don't worry. We got another Asian that won. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that, uh, and you know, Jalen has said it before. Um, just seeing Harrison Ford and him hug for the later win that happened. It just, you know, nostalgia, happiness. It's just things you lo- want to see when you're watching things like this. Um, because, you know, you see a lot of uh, people who come up and are flustered and are surprised that they won. But you never see someone who you can tell this was something that really completely changed their life in every way possible. Especially for someone like him who took such a long break from Hollywood. Um, do you guys have any thoughts regarding this category and Kehu Kwan? I was gonna say why. Well, I, I think I already mentioned it, but I was gonna say <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say like I think it's funny that um or not funny, but that I, he's I Asian. Did think, I did think it was interesting. Wow, <laughs> wow okay. this guy. I think I did think it was interesting that I had no idea that he was doing what he was doing, kind of behind the scenes, like as far as being like a stunt coordinator mm-hmm. on X Men and kind of. Like, I didn't know that at all. Yeah, that's like, crazy. Yeah, exactly. I was like, it, it was one of those things where when I saw that video, I was like, wow. And not not to mention, nobody really brought that up until he, you know, won the award. So it's one of those things where there's so many probably like unwritten stories, like in Hollywood, that people just never really talk about, and it's unfortunate because it's one of those like I, I mean I don't know about you, but as a kid, and I understand kid acting, you know, to adult acting, they always have like kind of different timelines and different stories. But when he was a kid and he was in both of those, you know, just timeless films, I mean, you're, it's one of those things where it's like without him there, like that movie is completely different, you know, when you're yeah. m- missing either of those characters. So for me, I mean, it just sucks that it took him that long to be able to get the chance to be represented in the film. And I thought it was fantastic that he finally got this opportunity with a fantastic cast and they just fantastic. turned in a fantastic movie. Like it was phenomenal, even though it was super confusing. A little it bit. was phenomenal. Little bit. <laughs> Initially I was like, what the hell is going on here? But I mean, once, once you got the rhythm, then you know, just, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think it was a little bit of a dead giveaway though. When Harrison Ford walks out with the, Oh, but that's for the later award. I mean, it is for the later award, but yeah. that one kind of that one kind of gave it away. I was like, "Oh yeah, the no, script don't. cannot be more oh, no, than this one, on. son of a, you <laughs> son of a bitch." You son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I, like so that, I like that you're smiling. <laughs> <laughs> um, moving on to the next category for best yeah. director. Um, once again, everything, everywhere, all at once. Daniel Kwan and Daniel Sh- Scheinert. Hope I pronounced that right. Can we get um, this guy one. to do the flashpoint stuff? Can we like it clearly? The Daniels. You know what yeah. I mean? Like I forgot they were just signed on to write something. Oh, I think it's I wanna say an episode of a Star Wars series. I could be mistaken. Jesus. Don't quote Ooh. me on that. I know that they just did get quote signed him. on to do something though. No. Don't quote me. Yeah. 
Um, but they did beat out <laughs> Martin McDonough for uh, Banshees of Inisherin, Steven Spielberg for The Fablemans, Todd Field for Tar, and then Robert Oslin for Triangle of Sadness. Did not see three of those movies, so I cannot speak to the directing prowess that was portrayed on the screen. Um, mm -hmm. Did you guys get a chance to see any of these? I did see The no. Fablemans. So okay. it, it is funny because I was like, but you know, when it comes to directing, I'm not entirely sure like what the directors did. So it's like they <laughs> like yeah. so yeah, it's like obviously <laughs> like there's the like the name in but it's one of those things where it's like I don't know where it shows because obviously I'm um, more focused on like the actors themselves. A lot of it is like oh. compositionally, uh pacing a lot of times are involved in what's cut, what's not cut. Um, flow of the movie, kind of. So it's a lot of those elements, like the year Guillermo del Toro won for the, the fish movie. Um, I immediately oh, wow, found wow. a way to watch that movie because he's just a wizard man, and and he's had some great films, but that one was the one was like, oh, that is that is why you are winning <laughs> the award this year because i mean the shots that he pulled off the way the movie was kind of structured and um yeah so that's like when it comes to directing it's like stuff mm -hmm. like that like how how is how are the scenes set up how did they you know move the actors in and out of the scenes during or the even dialogue guide the like, actors and how right. they, he wanted it portrayed on screen like is you know actors obviously yeah. will do their due diligence to say oh it's written in the screenplay show fear maybe the director wants the fear to be shown in a different way in comparison to how the, the actor walked on set like childlike fear versus like yeah. adult fear yeah which yeah. is right yeah two yeah. different things yeah. so there's so a, lot a lot of, of those moving things. parts that kind of go into it mm -hmm. no. all um, things told steven spielberg i mean he doesn't really need another one come probably on. the greatest director yeah. i was like you win live. at life just no. let other people get some awards you know what i mean yeah um, definitely not james yeah. cameron just so <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, uh, moving on to the next one. Best actress went to Michelle Yeoh for everything, everywhere, all at once. Um, beating out Anna de Armas for Blonde, Kate Blanchett for Tar, Andrea Riseborough for Two Leslie, and Michelle Williams for The Fablemans. Mm. Um, I think this is a huge win for her, especially as an actress who grew up usually making international foreign films for China coming over here, kind of getting these smaller roles, maybe like stereotypical roles, you could say. And the Kung a lot Fu of these lady, American that's like movies. literally all yeah, she was. really yeah. though, really. Yeah. Um, and then she grew her kind of repertoire up and then moved on to something like this, where she gets to be front and center in a Hollywood-based production, and she's getting her flowers for doing such a well job. Um, in comparison to the other actresses, um, I... Didn't see the other ones, but I know you Blonde saw the Blonde is on my list for several for reasons. Blonde is on my list for multiple reasons. <laughs> I hear it goes to a very dark Fancy. place, so good luck with that yeah, one. Yeah, Bianca and I tried to watch it. It's okay. It's, it's hard it's to okay. watch, first yeah. of all. And second, it was really hard to get past the fact that she's not really nailed down getting rid of the, the accent. accent. Yeah, yeah. It, it really took away from the film a little bit because you could tell she was trying very hard to like not do it. But I mean, it's hard because obviously, I mean, I don't even, I could not even understand how difficult that would be. But yeah, it, it showed. So for me personally, yeah. I didn't think that one, but Michelle Williams for uh, Fables Men. So that, I mean, she had a chance, but let's be honest, this was... <laughs> There was only one that was going to win this award. I mean, it by far and away the best in the category. So everything in that movie was Everywhere, required to be <laughs> <great actors. laughs> yeah. everything. Everything. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was uh, definitely exciting to see as well because I think she, I think she dedicated to like all the moms out there because it is a movie about a mother, especially mm -hmm. um, growing up in like an Asian community. Her struggles are. Definitely alike with a lot of um, immigrant parents who kind of come to America. Um, and it's a very specific kind of way that they think they need to raise their child as opposed to also balancing everything in their life, whether that's owning a business or working somewhere to kind of help support the family. So I thought that was a, a great insight for the movie. But not everyone would kind of recognize that, of course, depending on where they live. Um, next category is a best actor that went to our boy Brendan Fraser 
for The Whale, um, beating out Colin Farrell for The Adventures of Sharon, Austin Butler for Elvis, Bill Nye for Living, and Paul Mescal for After Sun. Um, did see the first three, did not get to see Bill Nye or Paul Mescal's um, performance. Um, any qualms with this? No, I, I no. really didn't have any. No, that one was fine. Mm-hmm. That's the most fine aside from the actress award that they did. That's it. Yeah. That's it. I think we've discussed on the pod before, like the whale was not in any way the best movie of the year. No. But so. he no. was the reason why it was talked about at all because mm-hmm. he did perform very well. Yeah. Um, and of course, the last category, best picture, which is usually the last one of the night, um, which was presented and uh, given out by Harrison Ford, went to Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, beating out All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar, The Way of Water, Banshees of Sharon, Elvis, The Fablemans, Tar, Top Gun Maverick, Triangle of Sadness, and Women Talking. Um, the one thing I thought was very awkward is, because you know how when they're reading the awards, they will say it pretty quickly just to kind of get it out on the microphone. Like, And the winner is... The whale, and they'll say it like very quickly, but mm. it's Harrison Ford, so he was like everything, everywhere, and everyone started <laughs> cheering already before he even got to <laughs> everywhere. All at once, there's uh, everything <sighs> everywhere. Everything, everywhere. All at once. Oh, Whoa, that was really good. <laughs> <laughs> I legit yeah. heard that, that was good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, no questions um, about Star Wars. Okay. <laughs> Everything Ever Won <laughs> swept a lot of categories this year, uh, beating out, I think All Quiet on the Western Front was one of the only other movies that was kind of um, point for point with them and how many awards they were winning during the night. Mm-hmm. Um, but near the later half, Everything Ever Won at Once kind of took everything going. Um, so yeah, kudos to the winners of this year's Oscars. Um, you know, we're just here to talk about whether we enjoyed the movie, whether it was deserved. We know that there's very 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 big conspiracy theories among why things are winning or why things are losing we're not here to necessarily kind of give voice to any of those um but since we did see a good chunk of these movies we did think we would give some of our thoughts regarding the winners um hopefully you guys enjoyed the the movies that were um nominated this year and that got their awards won or if maybe you thought someone should have won instead let us know in the comments yeah. if you're watching on YouTube because we'd for love that, to hear it. Yeah. I just like I feel like for that last one, any of those movies really had a chance. Yeah. There was there I mean, were like four or game. five of them. I think that's really. why they said that that's the only category they expanded back to ten mm-hmm. because it's so hard for the, someone like the Academy to pinpoint just mm-hmm. five of the greatest movies. And kudos to Top Gun Maverick for being nominated nominated because I watched it again and it's a damn good movie. Yeah, yeah. It really. Is. Thank God James it Cameron really didn't win. I would have quit. <laughs> Damn. Uh, <laughs> that's. I mean, that's that's fair. Actually, um, have you gotten a chance to see the movie yet? No. Absolutely not. Okay. All right. I was just curious. <laughs> Still has not received an uh, ounce of my money. <laughs> Only when it's on Disney Plus. Only no. when it's on Disney Plus. Um. Last thing we're going to hit before we move on to our episode reviews for The Mandalorian and The Last of Us. Um, Victoria Alonso, the former, uh, I don't want to say CEO, but chief, well, I guess you could say, in the visual effects department person. for Marvel um, Cinema. Uh, just, I don't know if it was like a mutual agreement or if she was fired or it was kind of like, hey, I need you to resign. Um, but she is out. Uh, I believe she took over the head role in i want to say right before the pandemic but i could be mistaken but it's very recent she's been a part of the uh department for a good while i think she was a co-producer when the first iron man came out and just kind of moved up the ranks from there um but it did seem kind of funky that she did get a little bit of separation from ironically a production company that has kind of been in the Rumors of poor managing regarding how they're treating the visual effects teams and things like mm. that. There have been some rumored reports. I, I don't know if they're confirmed or not, if they actually have any merit to them, saying that she actually played a lot of favorites with production teams and some other teams would get frozen out. Um, <sighs> and she would put it all, all on one <clears throat> team's desk, and it's kind of here and there, a lot of, you know... Uh, we've all been in workplaces when people right, get favorited right. it's very noticeable 
and it kind of affects morale as well as efficiency in the workplace. Um, but your guys' thoughts, I mean, if we're getting someone new in here to be the chief of this department, is this because we, we've said that a lot of the recent movies, the CGI is very CGI. We, we went from having Thanos, who could have been damn well a real person, right. to mm-hmm. this now, that we have now. Um, what are your guys' thoughts? Um, I'm, I'm pulling up a list here, um, just, just so we're clear. So she's, mm-hmm. you said about 2020 is when she took over the, the joint. I want to say around there. So on her okay, resume. So in 2021, she was promoted to president um, okay. of physical and post-production in visuals, but I don't know what her capacity was just before that as well. If I'm okay, not mistaken. So on I her resume though. Like a, oh, so is, I believe she was like a, uh, what do they call them? Like a. Not a temporary, Producer. but a interim. Uh, yeah, interim. I believe she was an interim president through the twenty twenty year. So she gotcha. may have she may have just of- received the official title in twenty one. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, mm-hmm. but go ahead, Jay. Gotcha. So basically, since twenty twenty. So on mm-hmm. her resume, Black Widow, Eternals, Shang Chi, Spider Man Three, Thor. Um, there was one mo- more here, but that one's not slated. Uh, Doctor Strange, Black Panther 2, and she will technically be on the slate for uh, Captain Marvel and Guardians, yes. So, I think if we go down the list here, Black Widow's CG, not great. I thought the Eternal CG was great. That was okay. It was fine. That was fine. It was acceptable. Shang-Chi, very anime and it well, looked very a, CG, but it was kind of in that disbelief out of it for a right, lot of it. Right. Hmm. Um, Spider Man, eh? The the suit always kind of has looked funky to me since he came over to the MCU. But that's because of the way they do it. They have a real suit, and then for some reason they do a CGI map on top of the suit for for extra stuff. I guess I don't know. It's weird. I think the shots where it's the real suit should just stay the real suit, and they can just use the CGI for the Spider Man stuff. That's just my opinion. Um, Thor Love and Thunder, not the greatest, looked very Xbox 360. Like the floating head, really? Yeah, it was not, it was not it. Um, Doctor Strange, more of the same story. Um, Black Panther, I think most of that movie looked pretty good, but Ryan Coogler also kept it pretty, like aside from getting into what is the Atlantis version, right, for Namor's. That's really where the biggest part of where the CGI for me kind of popped as being a little rushed. That's about it. Um, and obviously we don't know about Captain Marvel or Guardians yet. But So most of that time, not great CGI coming from Marvel. And obviously we've had other productions like She-Hulk. <laughs> Lord that have mercy. the best show ever? And then the CGI did not help at all. Not even a little bit. Not even a little bit. Not even a little bit. Um, Falcon and Winter Soldier in, like, actually looked weird, okay. Strange suit to make it easy on them. Like, oh, the suit uh, looks right. so animated. Looks so bad. <sighs> it's so bad. Should have just avoided but, having her as the She Hulk for eighty percent of that. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> just feel like yeah. it was. That'd have been great. You know, yeah. Imagine if it was like a lawyer show, and then she just did some She Hulk stuff. Uh, in it. That'd be great. That'd be a Wouldn't great idea. But anyway. Um, never I said that before. So. Falcon and Winter Soldier looked great to me because it looked very. It looked like it should have. It was one of those. It looked like it was a movie that they cut up into a show. And a lot of it was boots Solo. to the ground, real right. yeah. people, mm-hmm. just with enhanced kind of capabilities. So yeah. I think that yeah. was a good way to kind of like mask hide a little a lot bit, a lot more there. practical stuff in that one. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. but that opening that in the pilot though, that opening where Sam oh, has to flying be, through the caverns. yeah, that looked great. That looked straight out of an action like that looked like a cinema quality. CGI bit right you know, there. So that was great, you know. Um, so I can't wait for Cap 4. I, like, I'm like yeah. foaming at the mouth for that. But yeah. And then obviously, like I said, chong Shi, I gave a pass because it was already in this mystical world. So I don't need the CGI to look super realistic and ultra rendered. It looked good for what it was supposed to be doing. Like the dragon I thought yeah. looked great at the end. The rings, obviously, the effects on there were cool because they used some LED and the um, and the stunt work, so the lighting looked really nice on those. Um, I think the water scene when they're breaking into his, their dad's house and all that 
was cool. So that was fine. Um, but yeah, some of the other ones that we mentioned. <laughs> okay. Well, I, like, I feel like for a lot of the movies mm. or the productions in general, if you are creating a world that does not actually exist and that we would have no reference to actually compare it to, I can give you guys a little bit of leniency in its creation and what it looks like. But if it is something like, you know, She-Hulk, where you're having a, I don't remember how tall she is, eight foot tall woman, you got to be able to nail at least the clothing, man. Like the clothes are probably the one that's most used in CGI just because of its normalcy and everything. That one has to be nailed. If it's a city and you're trying to create something out of it, make it realistic because we know what cities look like. It doesn't necessarily have to be the perfect looking city, but if we get taken out of the movie because of it, then you know you didn't do your job. Not to mention the travesty of a trailer that dropped beforehand where we were all kind of like, is that really what it's going to look like? Because it didn't Like, it's great. early, guys. Maybe they got to yeah. finish it up. Yeah. yeah. That made the it render. worse. Yeah. Some touch-ups. No. no. Uh, but, they didn't yeah. do anything. That was the final Hopefully product. we get a, someone, a head who's going to really take charge. and James Cameron. <laughs> well, hey, yo. If James Cameron decided to do that, to come over. You wouldn't get a Marvel book. movie for eight years. <laughs> <laughs> but think of how good... The movie would be when it came out. <laughs> fuck that guy. You get Dude, a fuck their car t shirt. I'm getting a fuck James Gunn t shirt. Okay. Guardians That's of the Galaxy. James Gunn or James Cameron? Yes. Both of them? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Um, I think Guardians of the Galaxy is the last one that, or maybe the Marvels as well, that she's part technically going to be yeah the but the marvels has a little yeah. more time to touch up some of the visual effects in comparison to Guardians. God, I hope so, so. <laughs> maybe someone will step in and really kind of hope help, someone else wrote it hold their hand uh, all the way through but we'll see boy we're excited i just or, hope someone else wrote it are we it. watching that on debut weekend or which one marvels i can i want to see it again <laughs> I want to see Again, the trailer first. I do I need, want to see need, the trailer. I need some context yeah. first. It's funny because I was just thinking, I was like, I feel like regardless of the effects, I feel like there's not so much hype built around that movie right as now. As long as they let Brie <laughs> Larson be an Academy Award winning actress. Like the first movie did her such a disservice with how it was written. I was appalled. It's like. Could we ugh. be cheesier with a character? It kind of felt. Very cheesy. Yeah. Like what yeah. do you. She has won an Academy Award. Give her some juice, man. She had one and scene, the whole movie, mention, where she got the you know, flex. I have no, no issues with, like, no doubt. But the placement of the song they used in her, like, Dude. badass moment in God, the end of that movie just did not fit. Cancer um, in my veins. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's not Brie Larson's <laughs> fault, but at the same time, you got no. an Academy Award winning actress. Let her yeah. stretch her legs a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. So um, good in Infinity War. So good in Endgame. Mm-hmm. Just Very let true. her do her thing, man. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Because we uh, comic book movies are not doing too hot right now, but uh, fingers crossed. Um, but yeah, as we kind of move on to something that may be a little more cheerful, we're going to go over The Mandalorian Episode eight, uh, 3. Whoa, not 8. 3. 8. <laughs> eight. <laughs> three. You haven't seen it yet, but we have. No. <laughs> so watch us, because we will let you know everything that happens. <laughs> That'd be exactly. crazy, though, if we were the, one of those critics that got like released. One day. One day. Yeah. Marvel, great. we literally talk about you every single episode. Okay. Regardless of or if DC. you're on the docket. <laughs> just, Star Wars. Just let us be those yeah. people. Come on. Um, send us some screeners. Tic Tac's review before we get into the, the Star Wars. Um, Shazam was great. Um, oh, you what saw the it? Hell, what the hell are people doing? Yeah, I thought it was great. I heard it. a lot it's of audience time. members loved it, and it's just a lot of the politics behind it that people are not going to... I'm yeah, trying to figure out it doesn't matter, it. obviously, but go see it. It's great. I'm trying to figure out a day to watch it by myself. Bianca doesn't want yeah. to watch it. She was like, oh, the movie with that. And she was like, oh, this one. Remember? You remember this? She was like, oh, yeah, I didn't like that one. I was like, oh, okay. When I showed yeah, the one I was that's like, like really cool. I was cool like, she's about that one. She was like, oh, I don't like that one. Yeah. I was like, oh, sick. Okay. Expanding a universe that now <laughs> some guy <laughs> kind of fucked up. <laughs> Anyways, you know, Star Wars. But anyway, back to Star Wars. Yeah. Star Wars, episode three. Um, I know, Jalen, you <clears throat> kind of mentioned, I think, between us in uh, past non-recording that didn't happen um a <laughs> little bit of a filler episode but 
I thought there was a lot there that kind of kind of expanded the universe a little bit, gave a little more um, meat to what's going on post Empire. Mm -hmm. Um, We did get returning characters. Most of the episode was not focused on the Mandalorian, but in contrast to Boba Fett, the parts that the Mandalorian was actually in crushed it. I think it was just the beginning and the end part. I thought it was fantastic. Um, But I did like the filler and I did like the indication of, you know, clone research. How did, uh, you know, Palpatine come back to life or Snow? You know, you know. Retconning. uh, Indeed. hmm. Yes. I wonder what happened there. Uh, But Jalen, I'll throw it over to you first. What were your thoughts on this episode? Was there anything that really stood out to you? Um, And then was there anything that you just didn't give a care about? Um, nerd nuggets for me, because we're, we're talking about the cloning technology. Obviously, we get callbacks to Attack of the Clones. Yeah. Great series, how they made the entire st- or a clone army that would then become the Stormtroopers, of course, as we know. Um, <clears throat> back on, uh, can't, not Canto Bite, but the, you know, the whole operation there on the, the Storm planet. But a uh, cooler part for me, I think, was getting to see, like you said, the 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 other side of the the galaxy, and we always get more of this with Mando, which is why I like it so much. It's that the Empire wasn't a bad rap for everybody, which is it's it's hard to kind of wrap our minds around, but like the Empire for some people was a fantastic career that then gets ended by some kid from fucking Tatooine. You know what I mean? That's kind of like, you, it's re- like, seriously though, that's, that's the true. flip side. Like if you're just, you know, a, a nine to five, some, somebody working in that structure of the empire, right? Like you don't have a super close job to the emperor. Like you're just doing like accounting. Right. And all of a sudden now your life is upended because the empire has fallen. So you yeah. don't have a job. You got to support your family. So now in the new Republic, like, can you find work? Can you support your kids? Can you, you know, do all these things that you had been doing previously under the regime of what is obviously a tyrannical, crazy person, but yeah. nonetheless, it was what the emperor talked about st- stability and security for the entire galaxy. That's what it was. And so it is interesting that as fans, they're always the villains, but we're getting, more into that gray area of where people were operating on a day-to-day basis. Cause that scene where they're just talking to each other, like, Hey man, you miss like this and that on the, you know, when they're having lunch in that one part right, right after the Senate meeting, um, that part to me, I think was the most telling out of the entire episode and most, un, you know, revealing. So that was very much enjoyable to see that flip side of the galaxy in this episode, but yeah, very much filler, um, but I mean, it's, it's good filler. Like there's, there's some shows where you're like, good gold and ones that now sh- shall not be named <coughs> the flash. Um, but <laughs> this show, everything still leads up to something. So the cloning tech, all of that good stuff. Now there's one of two ways here. Obviously we're going to get some hints at Snoke. We're going to get some hints at Palpatine because they have stated they are trying to somewhat retcon some of the stuff leading from the new trilogy into George's new trilogy that he's writing. So we're going to get that, but what if there's just one of these clones laying around star killer from back in the day? I'm just saying guys, wouldn't that be kind of crazy? He pops out and he has the double lightsabers labels in the back starts trying to cut up din some kind of that would that's a crazy theory but it would be cool to see that would be off yeah. the wall that, that would be, be crazy you think Sam would, would have actually come through for it they could write it in a way where he's just like a clone that was missed or something like one of the ones that just got out and just has been trying to chill or something i don't know they could get away with explaining an older clone Sam Witwer in the show, basically. I mean, is what yeah, I'm I mean, by the time that they hits, actually get into production you know? for anything like that, Sam Witwer shows up. He's going to be a little older, so yeah, could make sense. Yeah, I'm sure timing wise, this isn't this isn't that far from Jedi. So, like, yeah. trying to remember when this is maybe like half a decade because yeah, um, a little bit. Good minute. So, Star Killer would, I mean, technically, he would be about Sam Witwer's age. He'd be like late forties. So, I mean. It wouldn't be that off to say. 
that this I, is possible. She's like, I you feel know. like I should have went first because Jalen dropped the bum nugget right I there. did drop a bum nugget on you. <laughs> Anyways, Kyoni, let us know your insight into this episode. You set me up. What crazy Star, Star Wars, Wars stuff I did you see? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there was the good guys, and then there was the no. bad guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was the guys with the helmets. Uh, and- um, <laughs> well, I, wanna, helmet. I was going to say, I'm going to give a shout out to Katie O'Brien, who I yep. did mention as my Wonder Woman fan cast. Um, yes. Beast. I mean, she's slowly coming out. I mean, more and more, she's getting these different roles. Like I mentioned before, she was in Andor, but it was kind of one of those quick kind of like, what should I do? And that was it. Like that was like her yep. whole scene, like there. So, um, to give her a full episode, like I, I mean, I kind of ex- I was saying earlier to Bianca that I was like, okay, this might be like, you know, her chance. But I didn't really expect her to be like a main focus throughout the episode. So you know, fantastic that we get to see. Focus. Yeah, <laughs> the literal focus that of was, the episode. That yeah. that, that little twist faced ending thing was wow that was twisted yeah legit. Was so messed up <laughs> <laughs> like the whole time i, I had no it, idea what was going really on. dark out of nowhere it's this funny because very... initially i thought like oh maybe she feels bad and she's gonna twist it the other way nope <laughs> she's just a full blast <laughs> and i was like oh wow okay but um yeah Very i mean it, it'd be interesting to see what they do with their character because they're slowly building her up to be something else um I think off kind of like off note from not necessarily with the show, but there was drama kind of after the episode because so many people were comparing her to Gina Carano's character. Um, true. True. Yeah. I true. mean, just because same type. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's like, you kind of got like kind of a muscular build, you know, character that they're going to just, you know, naturally they're going to put her in that category. Um, but which I don't think is fair. I mean, she's her own completely different character. Um, the other thing that I thought was interesting was that there was kind of like, uh, I don't know if it's, does she, was she working for Moff Gideon initially? She was on Moff Gideon's ship. With, yeah. So like, um, is the there a possibility that she's kind of the one to sort of bring him back into the fold there? It's a possibility. I mean, she was doing some dark ass shit. Yeah. I was but like, I don't think I, more likely we'd see Thrawn notes because but of what's I, happening that's, in Ahsoka. That's also the part that kind of confused me. And I don't know if you guys saw it a different way or anything, but like mm-hmm. she betrayed the guy, but mm-hmm. like did it for the Republic. Yeah. But so it's like she are is she bad or was she just trying to kind of help weed out well, I think the like, do, 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 part was, yeah, she's bad. Yeah. <laughs> she's <laughs> like, a demon, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think she started off, like, maybe if she felt bad and she actually, like, kind of, like, loosened it or something, then it would be and like, oh, okay. Because I, I don't remember in the previous, like, season, did he do anything to wrong her to make her feel this animosity See, towards okay, so this was kind of, like, my take on it was that because they – you know, like Jay said, there were parts of it where, like, like the scientist, he's very much kind of like, I just wanted to help change the world in a positive yeah, way. exactly. Where she kind of seems more like she was on board for, like, all the craziness that he was willing to go through and do in order to change the world. So I feel like she's kind of more like, I don't want to say a cultist, but, you know, some she's she really believed in that idea. So she's, I, I want to say agent. that she's, she yeah, she's kind of there taking out the trash of like the people who betrayed Moff Gideon and or like kind of didn't stay, stay true to his kind of yeah. whole regime. So I, I, that's my take on it. That's how I felt like she was that's kind of take. showing off. Like she was justifiable take. Yeah. Like she, yeah. she was still staying loyal, but I mean, like I said, props to the girl. She's going to be fantastic. I think, you know, if she ever gets another shot to be something else besides that one random quantum manium character, then, you know, and a question for Jalen. Why didn't Bo Katan tell Din what she saw in the water? She is still fighting through the belief of what his cult, air quote, believes in. And for her, it's again, we're seeing that progression of her having to break what her faction believed into what is best for all of Mandalore, which I think my my hot take is that we're going to get to a space where she will eventually become the leader of the Mandalorians, but it will be as 
old Mandalore once stood when Mandalore the Great was running the show, where there were no factions. It was Mandalorians as one people, not all the political crazy factions that split off um, over the years. Yeah, who could believe a nation would be split in their beliefs, right? Weird, huh? It's crazy. It's not relatable at all. No, not at all. Yeah, it's weird. That's not what this podcast is about. Maybe um, one example of that. <laughs> So, um, any last thoughts regarding this third episode for Mandalorian? Where's Ahsoka? That's it. Um, I was just going to say, I really enjoyed the <laughs> ending scenes. It was very good. Once they finally oh, went where back. Oh, he was redeemed. To, yeah, yeah. Din is thing. redeemed. And apparently is redeemed. so is bo <laughs> Also super, I, yeah. I think, I mean, I, I understood it, but it was a little weird when they were like, shut up stupid we don't like you and then it was just like no i brought water and then everybody was like all right you're cool man we missed you What's up? my mom like, said i can't like, play with was, you anymore yeah, it was like it was really weird how they're all being like really anti that he goes in does the whole thing and then there's like, because you took your clothes off you brother me something you weren't supposed to yeah. also, you're not he, welcome here anymore i was gonna ask do you think bokatan will take her helmet off again at some point of course yeah, yeah she's, like, she doesn't believe yeah, in what yeah. Din believes. Because so, in yeah, my head, I was just like, I I almost felt like she was going to do it right there, like immediately after they were like, you're going to be in. She's like, like nah. I don't believe what you believe. And I was like, oh. Everyone uh, just pulls up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, moving on. The big one. The Last of Us, episode nine, season finale. Mm. Um, it, it had a lot going for it, but I do feel like it was too short of an episode. Um, too short of a season. That's also very true. <laughs> the season uh, was yeah. Nothing. I did have a friend who recently played the uh, the first go through of the first game, mm -hmm. and he definitely said that they did kind of skip out on a lot of the details of him going in to get um, Ellie from the medical surgeons and everything like that. Uh, what were your thoughts, Keone? I'll start with you because you have played the game. Um, was this a kind of a good send off before we get into season two? Was there things that you left wanting more of? I mean, just more episodes, honestly. I mean, I, I can't really say that it was a bad <laughs> more episode. Now. You know, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was a, it was fantastic. I think they just finally we get like a full blown badass Pedro Pascal just tearing through people in the you know, it was i mean i don't know about you but like i said him. there's so many moments in movies where i'm literally like why would you let him like no there was none of that <laughs> like you why would you shoot him in the leg then leave him there's like a lot of that but that did not happen homeboy was just everything was a kill shot so um i to me it, i mean they did it really really good with just kind of intermingling the storyline with um, just making him a badass, and I and I don't know. It just Bella Ramsey. Obviously, there will be a lot Crushed of it. turmoil kind of coming soon after what just transpired. He lied to her. Yeah, and I mean, it, it is one of those things where I think that'll be one of those things where people are divided on, like whether or not he should have or he shouldn't have. You know what I'm saying? So. Um, and not just that, but even making the decision for her initially, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, me personally, I, it's, I actually can't even say, I was like, I don't know. I was like, there's part of me that's like, you know, maybe he should have not lied to her, but another part of me is like, I do it think. It drives the next segment. Well, <laughs> not, not just that, but I do think that sh she would have made the decision that he would, he wasn't okay with. And, um, it's one of those things where now there will be that extra added dynamic, which I think we already see with most kind of teenager-esque with their father type of um, films. But there will be that added layer of like she could have done something pretty epic with what she has. Um, so needs I think, of many versus needs of the few. Exactly. So I think, it, I mean, it was so good. But, I mean, from yeah. top to bottom, fantastic. Like I said, the only complaint is that it's too short. The season was only nine episodes. At least give us ten. You know, I get it, you know, odd episodes for life. But, you know, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you really. This one was a banger. Come yeah, on. Really Come could on. have been like 15 episodes, and I would have been perfectly okay with it. It just seems like it was such a short season. Like, I, I couldn't even believe it when I told Bianca. I was like, wow, we're. Like, I actually didn't know it was going to be a finale until you'd mentioned it because you were like, 
I think on the last pod or whatever you mentioned that we we're going to be talking about the finale, and I was like, that sucks because it's such a good show. So can't wait till it comes back, you know, in twenty twenty five. So <laughs> it's going to be real good. Yeah, that seems like so far a lot of shows are going to be coming back in like twenty twenty five. I was joking. Is it coming back in twenty twenty five? I have. I think they just started. they're shooting at the end of this year. I think, I think they're starting. Oh, they've like noted it should uh, be like twenty four ish. So. <sighs> Yeah. It's gonna be great. I was we joking. Wait for what, like the boys to come out again? Yeah, yeah. the boys. Lord of the Rings, House of the Dragon. The Power, Lord of the Rings isn't coming until 2026. Let's be honest. Jesus <laughs> Christ! Oh, but man. I mean, yeah. I mean, hey, if it was a season like Lord of the Rings where each episode was like 80 minutes, I think I would have been down for that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, but really. Um, Jalen, your thoughts on the season finale? Um, was it as visceral as you needed it? Did you want to see a little bit more brutality? Um, mm -hmm. did you kind of confer that this was a good way to end this season or, um, I know, I don't remember if you've seen the cutscenes. I guess, for the end of the game one, but this is kind of coincide yeah. exactly what you were imagining as well. It's about what I would have pictured it. I do, like I said, there was mentioned, there was a lot of the hospital that was cut out, but needless to say, I, this might be a hot take for a lot of people. Uh oh. I do think this was a perfect finale. Oh, okay. Um, in regards to when it's done, all of us on the couch are like, wait, oh, wait, yes, wait, no, no, you, you have to, you have to keep going. No, you can't. No, no. Um, the family talks like that. And there's questions. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of things in the air, and we're making predictions already. No. There's good conversation about should Joe have lied, should he have not lied, um, and all that kind of stuff. So I, I, I think it is a perfect season finale in, in that regard. Um, now, as far as which side you lean on, I lean on Joe's because of it's one of those things he's lying to protect Ellie from not only as what all the reality of that, as all parents do, um, lying to protect Ellie from that choice, not only for herself and what she's able to process at this age, but also from himself. He doesn't want to let Ellie go. Ellie, he finally broke through that barrier of tension that we had all season of accepting her finally as that daughter role in his yeah. life. And now there's going to be that added tension of the lie that's going to hang over them in season yeah. two, which is perfect. Um, so I thought that was great. And obviously the, God, dude. It's it's just it's just nice to see a send like a, a a real payoff to something that's been alluded to all season long, which is just like we've through dialogue and through characters have heard about like why you don't want to be on Joe's bad side. We've seen little <laughs> flashes of it here and there. Obviously the Twitter mm -hmm. scene was just a little kind of peek was... in there of what he's capable of, but this is the epitome of why, you know, Homegirl in the first two episodes makes that very, very distinction. Why so many people have that reaction towards like, oh, shit, Joe. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. fuck. You know what I mean? <laughs> because when capable, when driven, that man murdered at least 50 people in that <laughs> hospital. Yeah, when he was holding <laughs> Ellie, did I did not expect him to have his all. gun like under her legs. Like, boom. Like, yeah. oh, my God. Yeah. That's what that, my mind immediately is like. He's gonna just get her as soon yeah. as as soon as she gets in range. He's already got it. Like I know, I I know this is how this how this ends. As soon as she was walking towards him, because he says it as soon as he kills the first two dudes, he's like, "I'll fucking die for this." Like straight up, like it. it's, it's like it's me versus you, bro, and you're not winning. Like that's how this went down, and it was great. Um, uh, again, it was cool to kind of see that culmination for that character because we kind of been waiting for that real like badass Joe oh, yeah. moment. And then as still I like that, that, it was quiet, you know, <laughs> right. You know, <laughs> we'll get there. I'm moment. sure. Yeah. Um, but it was cool because I think, I think the way it was shot for me was, was very new age, kind of indie stuff um, because they didn't, you know, they, they muted it a little bit and there was some other stuff playing over top of it to kind of layer in like what was going on. But the brutality yeah. of it was not, was not like scripted from how the action scenes were shot. So that was really interesting the way they did that at the end. Um, and then obviously I think the lie was just a very beautifully acted scene from both sides. I think Bella just kind of subtly had that look of like, she knows Joe just lied to her, but she also is 
thankful that he lied and did what he did because she knows, you know, at this point, like he just murdered everyone. There were so many her. indications. Like, yeah. I woke up from anesthesia. Why am I still in a gown? Where is right. everybody else? I we had to everything. get up quick. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like Could she he knows he lied. Anything? I think. I think more. It, it's one of those things for her decision itself it would have made it a little better for i guess for audience sake and even for joel's sake if they had asked her before just going straight into it was yeah knocking her out and being like well we're gonna t- kill her right now so you know yeah, it's one and of that's things. the thing too yeah. why i side with joe because she didn't actually make it yeah they just they abducted them and then because of what her mom had told whatever mm-hmm. her face was uh, that was the assumption is that, well, Bella would definitely make that choice uh-huh. there. Or Ellie, I guess, in that case. But, you know, that, well, Ellie's character would definitely make that choice. And she's literally unconscious. You didn't ask her shit. And from where Joe's sitting, I would have had the same reaction. I wouldn't have been like, please move. Or, like, I'm either I'm dying or you're dying. And then I'm walking out with my kid. Like and that's, then she's dying. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, I man, sheesh. What a, what a show. What an adaptation. And... Season two is going to be fantastic. Um, if you're one of these people that is on the recast train, I swear to God, I will find you and recast perhaps who? do something unpleasant. The clickers? <laughs> they want. There is a lot of fan uproar right now to recast Bella Ramsey because, technically speaking, in The Last of Us 2, Ellie is in her 20s. She'll be in her 20s by the time they start filming. Literally yeah. my rebuttal. Like, shut your face. <laughs> now, because she does have, like, Tom Holland baby face thing going on, she's not going to be able to sell. Like, really what, they, what they're what they saying is, like, give us somebody bangable in season two. Like, get over yourself, bro. Like, that's what they want because they're sweaty and internet nerds. Like, that's what the, the consensus is. Yeah, they just want a hotter 20-year-old actress to be in there and do all this shit. But meanwhile, we have a very talented actress in Bella Ramsey who's more than earned the role. And the directors themselves are like, we're not recasting. You're going to have to deal with it. Don't so, worry, guys. We'll put Megan Fox in there next season and have her just shit on please no. everyone. Please no. <laughs> yeah. Like a lot Until of... they announce it's Ana de Armas. And then Jay's like, I mean, really? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, you know, I was, you know, Bell Grimms was cool, but at the same time, like, she like, was, was great. She really the best but actress. Like, I think she's going to bring something new to the world. I always I really thought do. that Ellie seemed kind of <laughs> ethnic. You know what? You know? <laughs> We don't necessarily see uh, where her dad was. Maybe you think his name about was it, guys. Jose. Like she was yeah. taller too. So like, yeah, that too. <laughs> totally. You know, like yeah. Like you guys. I mean, everybody remember, gets a glow up at some point, but, right? Like, <laughs> you know, what definitely. I mean? Like takes a step up with that glow up in game two. But, <laughs> that's just me, man. Oh, I would lose my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I would lose my mind. I think a lot of the world for so many gone. reasons. Yeah. Like, first of all, why? Second of all, thank you. But also, <laughs> why? Like, I don't understand. Uh, oh, I hope that does not. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's happening. Bell and Ramsey crushed it. Yeah, there's no. If way. you don't think so, you obviously are living under a rock and don't know how actors actually act. So. Oh, yeah, it doesn't. Yeah. Say it. Yeah. Any last thoughts, gentlemen? No. Great. All right. Well, this has been a this was a good pod. We had a lot of information we went over. Um, we're hoping that some new shows come out that are reviewable that you guys are interested in that we can definitely kind of take part in um, because I know that there has been some ambiguous kind of captions for the Disney Plus shows that were slated to come out soon. Um, who knows what's going to happen with those? But right now, we are going to still come to you guys each week with the Mandalorian episodes, as long as those are up. Um, and we'll see. Maybe something else is going to kind of catch our eye as we move along. But, uh, gentlemen, let people know where they can find you, starting with you, Jalen. You can find me on Twitter at Jalen Holson. You can find me on Instagram at Art by Jalen. You can find me on Twitch at Mocha Thanos underscore LGG. Kyoni. Uh, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch, K-O-N-E, K-A-Y-O-H-K-N-E-E. You guys can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch at, at Nolan K-Y-T, N-O-L-A-N-K-Y-T. <laughs> also give our Instagram page, The Poi and Soil Podcast, a follow as well. We are coming out with Reels Weekly now for our segments. And just a reminder, 
If you guys once again are a part of the volleyball world, please feel free to join us on our new segment, Team Huddle, that is going to be releasing every Thursday. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, we are definitely coming in hot with these YouTube videos of our actual episodes. So if there is anything you guys like or don't like, please feel free to leave a comment under the videos and we'll take it to heart. We'll let we'll see what you guys are saying and we'll we'll listen. Um, but yeah, I appreciate you guys tuning in with us. Thank you guys for making us a part of your day. We enjoyed having you be a part of ours from all of us here at Poly and Soy. Good vibes and love. Bang and a bang. Hell yeah. James Cameron sucks. Peace out, warehouse. We'll catch you on the flippity flip. (laughs) Peace out. The music is not playing. Not Uh, at all. A few moments later. (laughs) (laughs) Beautiful.